I want to look at the story of Daniel this morning. And I just ask that you look at it with fresh eyes. Say fresh eyes. Look, y'all, I get it. I've heard the story of Daniel and the lion's den. Y'all be like, ooh, I've heard it. Daniel, lion's den, big deal. But I'm asking for you to look at it with fresh eyes. Say it again with me, fresh eyes. Thank you. So it's kind of like that food dish. You know, I'm a big boy, so I have food analogy. Here's the first one. It's kind of like, you know, somebody saying, oh, you got to try this this person's macaroni and cheese. I'm like, I've had macaroni and cheese. It doesn't get better than my grandma's. Next. But then you mess around and try lobster mac. <laughs> Good God. Is that the Holy Spirit in this bowl, Jesus? <laughs> what? So as we look at Daniel today. Act like it's the Holy Spirit in this bowl. <laughs> Daniel 6, starting at verse 1. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with the three administrators over them, whom uh, one of them was Daniel. The satraps were uh, made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Say the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct over government affairs. But they were unable to do so. They could not find any collusion. Oh, I'm sorry. Corruption. Some of y'all will get that later, you know. <laughs> uh, in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it is something to do with the law of his God. Now, I want to talk to you for a little bit from the topic of when favor is present. Say when favor is present. Now, we have to debunk a couple of lies here that fav you don't just have favor when your life is all fair or when only fair things happen to you. That doesn't just mean that you're walking in favor because sometimes you can be walking in favor, right spot in the middle of God's will for your life and things not be fair. Things don't happen fair, you know, and so I know that's a brand that doesn't really sell well. You know, if we said, oh, come to Jesus, you know, and everything might not be all right on the surface, but your soul will continually be imperfected to look more like him. See, we don't that don't sell. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got to We got to say some stuff that people are just going to bite on. Oh, your best days are ahead of you. Come on. Like, that's it. That's it. And we don't have to sell Jesus. It's a product that sells itself. What it does is it takes us being transformed or else we will feel like we are selling a product that we do not believe in. I'll say that again. You know why people don't like street evangelism? Or the thought of it, because you feel like, well, I don't want to be fake. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be all that. But what if it just was you being transformed into the image of God, just being yourself, and people happen to be around? They're attracted to the God. They come talk to you. You tell them what he's doing in your life. And wow, you're actually evangelizing. The other is a counterfeit that makes you feel good, but you really ain't did nothing. It's like slapping lipstick on a pig and calling it something else. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's not working. And so what happens is we've got so many skeptical Christians who, 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 who are scared to go deeper in faith because of the appearance of looking fake, not realizing that that's the, the biggest fake position ever. Like, just be yourself. Be you. Be transformed by the Holy Spirit. And the favor of God will follow you. Daniel, he's in a situation, and right now it's not fair. 
the first thing that I want to be able to look at is this, is that when favor is present, there is, an, there is always an opportunity for envy. Say envy. Envy is always the byproduct of the religious and political spirits. You can hold that point. We'll come back there in a minute. Envy doesn't allow us to celebrate the possibility of what God could do in us because we are stuck being mad at what we don't have. Social media can be the breeding ground of envy. Me just in my personal walk and being transformed by Jesus, this is, this is how I tackle this. This is how I walk with this. I begin to celebrate the people and the situations that I once was envious of. Simply saying, I'm inspired. It's really simple. Not too deep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're looking for something like deep theological truth, no, 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 no. Just simple. I'm inspired. Because what we do is we don't lack, the, we, we lack celebrating it. And so low key, it, it, it eats at us and we become bitter. And now the next sentence is, after we see it, we're like, I wonder how they did it. But did they tell the truth though? Who they have to, who they have to connect, who, like, you know, we're so negative sometimes, it's just in our self-view of each other's. If you have a genuine problem seeing your friend happy, nobody would admit to it publicly first, you know, like, but this is what, deal, this is what messes with us. Because you think about it, you've been working really hard at this thing, and, you know, your friend, they also been working too, but you feel like it's your time. I don't know if it's the wife that's ready for a child or if it's the, the, uh, the, the girlfriend who her girlfriend's about to get married and she's just ready. Come on, y'all. Offense is everywhere. And when we can't celebrate others, we really can't partner with the work that God wants to show us is possible. Why do we see that happening in someone? So that it builds our faith that it's possible. Not so that we say, mm-hmm, like, I mean, I want it, but I don't, I mean, what did she have to do to do that? What? What? Am I talking, to, is it just me? Maybe, <laughs> you know? We're so, we, 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 we're so negative in that sense. And so the administrators, second point as far as looking at this, the administrators were upset that they did not think Daniel had the pedigree to serve in the capacity that where he was serving. Now, you got to understand this. Some of you are called to, to do some things, and God's going to uh, be moving in your life or already moving, and there's going to be people around you that just don't think that you're qualified. <laughs> Heck, maybe you don't think you're qualified. I run a construction company. Uh, two years ago, I don't think I would have said I was qualified, but God opened doors and now it's happening. And, and that's the grace I'm walking in. When there's favor on your life, it's not fair for you to take credit. I don't care like how much, <laughs> how much affirmation you get by taking a selfie like at your Bible saying like, oh, this is, this is Bible time. You know, look at me, new year, new me. And it's like some of us found the word toxic and we just love it. We hang on to it and we just, oh, no, they was toxic for me. They got to go. <laughs> maybe sometimes there was toxic thinking in us. Maybe, maybe, maybe we couldn't celebrate them. And so in order for God to keep them healthy, he removed them from us. <laughs> oh, my toes hurt saying that thing. <laughs> What? Envy, it robs us of joy. And it forces us into this place of comparison. And we know that comparison kills us every time. Verse 6. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, My, may King Darius live forever. I want you to understand something. As we're reading this right here, this is why I said, when favor is on your life, it's not always going to be a fair journey, okay? Because these are literally people right here in this text who are making up full-fledged lies about your boy Daniel. And Daniel's done nothing but walk in the favor of the Lord, meet with God consistently and constantly, 
Continually, he's meeting with God, yet he is the target of nonsense. So some of us think that when we're walking right in right, in right step with God, that when we're walking in right step with God, none of these things are going to happen. People ain't going to talk about me because I'm walking with God. That was, you know, like it's a, it's a sad reality for you to wake up. If that's just you, find, you figuring it out today, welcome to the club. But when we walk with God, what's attractive to him becomes attractive to us. And also what doesn't like him begins to not like. So now hell's, hell's target that, that, you know, hates the, the power and presence and blessing of our God now becomes now focused on us. So we see Daniel walking through this, and, and I'm just trying to get through this for, for sake of time. They, they appeal here to the king in verse 8. They say, now, your majesty, issue this decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered. See how the devil always tries to work and tries to twist laws and all this stuff to, to, to make it seem like it's going to be buttoned up with his plan. And so they ask the king to put this in writing. Don't only just say it, put it in writing. And so in verse 9 it says, so King Darius put the decree in writing. The second point I want you to be able to, to get from this is when favor is present, the political and religious spirit will be exposed. A religious person will become political if it advances their agenda. We see this in old churches all the time. Just vote the pastor out. You don't like that word? Just vote him out. Y'all laughing, but that's like how some churches operate. <laughs> it's not a theocracy. It's a bureaucracy, and it's a democratic. It's it's a democracy, and they're gonna have their way. If we're not careful, we can grow into the same thing. Right now, we're young. We're bribe, We're vibrant. We're doing all this stuff. You feel great, like you you have healthy leadership. You have healthy healthy things in place. But if we ever get our eye off of God's presence and we just want our preference, we will lean more to legalistic thinking. Legalism is not holiness. I want to be very clear on that. When God is calling you to a life of holiness, watch out for that person's like. Eh, hold up, brother, that's just legalism. No, legalism is trying to do the things of God or trying to do good without God. I'm going to help somebody else, you know, like just real simple. Legalism is when you're trying to do good without God. You being called to be holy, set apart, not having sex before marriage. Oh, let me go there, right? You know, not doing this thing. Not do, that's not legalism, honey. It's holiness. <laughs> and he will empower you to be holy. This is why he says, be holy as I am. There's grace for holiness. There ain't grace for legalism. A religious person, so, so a religious person will become political if it advances their agenda, just like a politician will become religious if they can earn a vote. Stay woke. The religious and the political and religious spirits seek for man's approval. They become appealed and applauded by narcissistic thinking. Meaning, it is something that uplifts me. Most of the time, the things that we have problems with as Christians in our context in America is when something doesn't work out for me. Not when God's kingdom is advanced. One of the problems that we have here is that, that in this text, these, these leaders come together and they try to assert to the king that everyone thinks like this. Everyone thinks that you should write this decree. But the truth is, not everyone does, because Daniel was one of the highest ranking authority, one of the highest ranking administrators, and he wasn't present. So it's not fair for Daniel, but God's still faithful for Daniel. 
So, I said this last service, and I think it's still applicable for today, so I'm going to say it again. I think that this generation's problem that's more dangerous than what the previous generation dealt with with prosperity gospel. This generation's gospel that's more dangerous is popularity. It is a, pop, it is a gospel that makes you want to just feel popular so you don't preach the things that are actual real. You only present what you think will be popular. It's much more dangerous than name it and claim it ever was. It's much more dangerous than just, you know, believing for the best. Because you can actually, you can bend that back to being rooted. Like, hey, you're far off. That te- you're definitely not with God's will for what you're saying there. But with this popular thing, it affects more than you. It affects the destiny that God's designed you and the influence that God actually has for you in him. When we're trying to build influence, we literally call them influences, y'all. Like, it's people who grow big platforms, grow big followings. And sometimes we're willing to lose holiness to grow our platform. And Daniel is unwilling to lose holiness even if it was for 30 days. Can't you hear it? Can't you hear someone, you know, like there's a lot of you guys who are, you know, young and like just trying to get it and kill it on your financial goals, business, all that stuff. Anybody in here aspire to own a business one day, do your business thing? Yep, a lot of people. Entrepreneurship is on the rise. I love it, but I love being real with people about that. And it's just like, can't you hear it? It's like, well, okay, you can prosper. You can, you can do all the goals that you want. But just for 30 days, can you just kind of tone it down with that Jesus thing? You know, like, I mean, look, you're going to make millions. Like, no, no, for real. You, you're going to be able to, like, you're going to be able to control your message one day. But just for 30 days, don't talk about Jesus. Like, don't talk about the Holy Spirit. Don't talk about, don't, don't talk about people being set free. Like, I mean, this is business, you know what I'm saying? Like, and in business, let me, let me bring it to you like this. Some churches would be able to even say even to you, Nikhil, because I believe this is going to be a house of freedom, a house where people come and actually get set free, a house where people not just sit, but they actually be seated in Christ and his identity. So it's going to look like this. Well, how about y'all just stop like, you know, like focusing on all that Holy Spirit stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just, you can grow without all of that. I mean, you heard somebody, like, they were speaking in tongues. Like, y'all can't control that. Why don't you stop? Like, that's crazy. It's not cool, dude. <laughs> it sounds different for every situation, but all of us are faced with some type of compromise. And someone's telling us to suppress who God designed us to be, even if for a moment. I find it interesting that pimps and people who who abuse women in traffic it starts with one act of suppressing themselves and it's promised to be only momentary and they end up in a life so if god calls us his bride he's saying don't settle for one momentary action one moment of suppression where there is a world that is trying to get you to suppress your voice well you know i would say that but i don't want to seem churchy you know i would go to revival i mean like if nikhil did revival i would go but like you know i mean i got a life too my hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and his if that's just a song to you, then it will seem religious when God tells you to do something that's out of, the, uh, that's out of, that's out of your, your framework. But if your actual yes belongs to God, then whatever he says, you've already said yes, so you're just walking it out. You know why most of us can't be fathered in churches? And some of you haven't let Pastor Brian in this way. He's not here. I'm just, this is what God's giving me right now. This is a ministry where you're supposed to be fathered, produced, sent out. It's dysfunctional when you got a 35-year-old living at home. But some of you have idolized the word to a level and degree to where if God was telling you, hey, you're being raised up here, you're being strengthened here in this ministry, and ultimately, Pastor Brian is going to send you out. 
you have a problem with that because in your life, and naturally, we've had dysfunction. We haven't had safety of family. We haven't had fathers in households. We haven't had healthy fathering to look at. And so we think that just means he's going to throw me away. So God is saying, hey, Daniel doesn't have this type of favor on his life unless he actually submitted to authority for the season. Some of you haven't let a pastor in because some bad thing happened five years ago, ten years ago, whatever. And so you said, oh, never again will that happen. So I'm just going to be coming. They can't really, they won't really have me really serving to that degree because, you know, I've been hurt. Some of us need to get over our hurt. And we need to start with where Jesus actually transforms us. Can I just be real? Y'all, like, this is real. This is is real conversation for 1030. This is what God's heart is for you in the next four minutes and 43 seconds. This is God's heart for you. Get rooted. Stop being nomadic. Roaming to and forth with every wave of doctrine. When the doctrine you like it goes over here, you go over here with it. When the doctrine swings to this degree, you say, oh, no, that's not for me. But God has a blessing and a favor-filled life for you when you root. Some people are hungry for platform. And God's just saying, hey, I want to develop you where you're at. We can't have 500 pastors that speak on a stage at the same time. But every single week, we can have over 500 sermons going on in all y'all's houses. Oh, 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 let me not go there, right? <laughs> let me just be the preacher, the man of power for the hour. No, I'm done with that. Why? I'm a son that is rooted in where God has me. And I talk from that place. There is no transformation in your life if you're just dependent upon my talent as as a communicator. There's no transformation of that. There's just you being a judge and being like, ooh, that was an eight. That was a good joke. Mm, That was a corny one. Whatever. But that's how we are. We constantly judge and assess the word that's being coming like rather flippantly, like how Minister Maisha was early, like, God, what you got? Oh, that's what Pastor Brown had today? Like, I mean, I done heard that. Like, it was okay. The most damaging thing we can say most of the time is like, oh, you know, like, how good was the word? Can you please just eat? Eat and then show the fruit of it and how you run out there. Don't. Ooh, y'all lucky y'all got two minutes and 45 seconds. (laughs) Let's stop being consumers of the gospel and be seated. You know why? Most of us need to actually be transformed and not saved to church, but saved to Jesus. If you don't have a Damascus Road story, ask the Lord, God, show up in my mess right now because I'm tired of playing religion. I'm tired of playing church and this will run out. But I need actual transformation. What happens when actual guys actually say, you know what? I'm going to be transformed. God, I'm going to say yes. I'm actually going to say yes. And God will bless the yes. What he doesn't bless is this mess we give him is one day a week and six days we live like we want to. We think he's going to honor an hour on one day a week. Fresh eyes. Daniel, because of where he's seated, this happens in this story. Because of where he's seated, he ends up in a very uncomfortable predicament. But guess what? He had favor with the authority in place. Daniel had favor with King Darius. Could it be that you might be in a difficult situation right now because God is working good out in a way that you can't see? Most of us want success, but we don't want what comes with success because a successful person would tell you quickly, it doesn't feel very successful when someone's telling you succeed. Like, oh, you're very successful. No, it feels like thousands of failures. Like, I feel like I just failed enough and fell into it. I tried and failed, tried and failed, tried and failed. See, this is what you don't see. You're seeing someone's Instagram story and you don't see their life story. If you could see what it actually took, you would be saying, oh, okay, don't sign me up for that. 
But Daniel is there for King Darius. Say that, for, for King Darius. King Darius in your life could be your boss. It could be whoever's in authority over you. And Daniel, the word of God says this as you go back and study this, because I'm believing that that's what's going to happen as you guys actually go back and study this. As you go back with this, this is what's happening. Daniel is there. God appoints Daniel to even go through pain and a lion's den. But what happens is, is that he's, he gains favor with King Darius. And King Darius's heart is turned towards Daniel. But King Darius had a job to do. And some of us can't see God in our pain. But God was working even through this to produce something in Daniel. King Darius, it says that he, he commands that Daniel goes into the lion's den. And if the band could come back, he commands that he goes into the lion's den. And when he does this, it says that the king loses sleep can't eat. God was working something out, even in an unbelieving king, through a seated son. Could it be that you're at the place where you work, where you have influence, where God has planted you for a season, so that the person in authority over you could actually see more of Jesus? What happens after a night of restless sleep and not sleeping at all? This is what happens to, to Daniel. This is what happened well, to, to Darius. After not sleeping at all, he now wakes up and he has some type of anticipation and he goes to the den. Now, what's interesting about this den, there's been a stone rolled over this den. Don't that sound kind of familiar where there's stone that's rolled over what would be a tomb? Because when someone jump, will drops you off with lions in a hole, it's going to be a tomb boo boo because you're not supposed to live but he goes to what should be a tomb and of an empty body probably shredded by lions at this point but he goes with expectation and he says Daniel servant of the living God did your God who you've served continually and faithfully did he rescue you it's illegal to ask for the rescue when we don't have the serving continually and consistently. It's absolutely nonsense for us to be coming to him. Rescue me. We have no desire to actually realize what Jesus did for us, but we just want security from this damnation of a place. <laughs> and we say, rescue me. Could it be that God is working something out in you? Not just for you, but for your environment. I shared this story. As King Darius is proclaiming the goodness of God, Daniel's pain point becomes a place of promise because now it wasn't his platform and his position that elevated him to build his resume, but it was his seatedness and how he was that God uses to transform the king and a whole kingdom. Could it be while you're trying to grind for your own ambitions, you're missing out on your greater role that you serve in the kingdom? We're taught to grind. We're taught like that's, that's society. Oh, just build your brand. But Daniel's brand that he was, he was more comfortable with and more secure in was the brand of the kingdom and King Jesus, a holy God. I shared this story, but my wife, she came to me a couple of weeks ago. If you guys could stand to your feet. She came to me a couple of weeks ago. And what she said was this. Well, not a couple of weeks ago, but it finally got real a couple of weeks ago. Probably about five years ago. First time she came to me and said, hey, I think, I think I'm not going to be, at, I think I'm not supposed to be at my job. Um much longer and I was like that ain't God <laughs> oh no way that's God uh, <laughs> you saying what and she said yeah I don't think I'm supposed to be at my job and all this and I was like okay I was like yeah we'll pray about it you know what you know what those quick we'll pray about it mean I ain't got time for this that's what it means you know if, unless we praying right there like 
No, I'm, I'm just avoiding the situation. Let's stop being religious. We be avoiding some stuff. And so over the course of five years, just like that Chinese bamboo, I believe that something was growing in her and growing in us. And it came to root probably a couple of months, uh, about a month ago. And I finally was realizing that, hey, I need to partner with what God's doing in her. It was interesting because when she actually put in her two weeks and she had a chance to talk with her boss, the boss doesn't, doesn't get mad or all this stuff. She says, can you pray with me? And who's going to be there to pray with me? I was like, wow, okay. And it turns into this ministry opportunity. I'm telling you, the place of pain is not always the place of your torment. It's a place where God has promise. And it's good. And there's so much that, that God has used to deposit, you know what I'm saying, through her. But I just wasn't ready for that. Like, I wouldn't, mm -mm -mm -mm, no, no, no. What have I been holding up? What could you be holding up just by saying, no, God, mm -mm, I'm going to do it my way because it's security in my way. You know what I went to God with? And I said, God, if you're calling her to do this, you're saying that you're good for this amount of money. Am I the only one that's that real? Look, you can, you can listen to Steve Harvey all day long you want and all these entrepreneurs about jumping. But listen, I done jumped and I know. <laughs> You're hitting some stuff on the way down. So because I done jumped already, I done said, okay, God, we're trusting you for this amount of money then. And he says, that's nothing to me. Oh, it's nothing. Because the whole thing wasn't about that being the place of provision. It was about my wife and us being in a place of blessing for that place. See, that place is representative of the land that we are to conquer, i.e. Nikeo. Your place of where you are, God's going to turn it into the land that flows with milk. And I'll prophesy over here because I don't know. You know. The place where you are is where God's going to turn into the land of milk and hunger. You're called a conqueror, church. You're called, a con you're called to conquer. The place where you're standing is now becoming the, pla the, pr the land of promise. Your provision is not who you think. You're, the person that's on your check, that's who God uses to provide. He is provision. He is. It is. It is him and him alone. Listen, if he wanted to find you under a rock, he would find you. If the government could do it, guess what? God is that much bigger to find you. And if he wants resources to come to you, guess what he says? He says, call out to me. Cry out to me. And faith without works is dead. So if God's called you to wealth increase, go and pursue him. Say, God, okay, well, now is this an opportunity that you're bringing or is this a counterfeit? Oh, now I'm digging. Now, now I'm digging with some stuff, right? Because we've been taught to rely on that tax return. But the life that God has you is to actually pay taxes because your wealth will increase to that degree. Because your generosity will increase to that degree. I declare broken thinking to be over. Generational blessing. Generational. We grew up with a tax return saying, oh, well, that's when we get closed. Oh, that's what. No, no, no. God says, I'm calling you to a land of milk and honey. Some of y'all will get that tomorrow. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you speak and you speak clearly. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts down to the marrow of man. God, I thank you that it divides from good and evil. I thank you that it will change us if we let it. I thank you that today there is someone who has heard these words and it's brought life to them. I prophesy over someone who is wanting, who's been thinking about a jump, who's been thinking, is this the time? I say that this is now. You're in a now moment. God's saying there's grace for you right now. You might be in one one of those parts of that journey of five years but God is saying that this is a season where his hand is upon your life if you will trust him he'll be good for it there's no amount of money that any man for your head because you're a king's kid Father, we walk in unprecedented blessing, unprecedented refreshing, and unprecedented grace today. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.